Alright, so um, they were there was a unit, circle, and angle, special angle. So uh, what we want to make sure you guys remember is how to label the O, H, and A from Sokotoa. So if you look at the green angle, does anybody know what the what this side would be? Opposite, it was this one. Great and awesome. 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 Now, um, I gave you guys something called the unit circle. It looks like this on the back of your cover sheet. And you guys were all like, oh my god, this is so scary. There's tons of stuff on here. Today, what we're going to be doing is kind of examining the unit circle and making it not so scary for you guys because a lot of it is pretty easy. It just looks terrible. All right. So, some facts about the unit circle. The radius on a unit circle is always going to be 1. And it kind of makes sense. If you guys look at your unit circle, a radius is the distance from the center to the outside. So if you guys know that this is a radius right here, think about how you would get over it. This is 1. It's like the ordered pair going over 1, but then you're not moving up or down at all. So it's going to be 1, 0. If you know this is 1, because it's the radius, if you go over zero, but up one to get to that point. Same thing to go to your 180. Right? If this radius is one. Okay? Think about direction though. Would this be positive or negative on a coordinate plane? You're going left. Good, negative, that's so nice. So you're going over negative one, and then you're not moving up or down. So that's the order here, negative one, zero. Then if we go down, same thing, um, you'd be going left or right, nothing. But we have to go down one. And since you're going down, that's why it's negative one. How is that? Not too scary to think of? No, it kind of makes sense, right? If your radius is one. So that's the first fact about a unit circle. Oh, yeah? It'll be, it'll be even better like, after that you'll really kind of get it, I think. Now, the other two things that we're going to hit on today is that the cosine is going to be the x coordinate. So, you guys know you have like x and y, right, as coordinates. The cosine is going to be our x part. The sine is going to be the y part. So, in all of our ordered pairs, the cosine is going to be the x coordinate. So, this is like your cosine, 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 cosine. The sine is going to be the second one. Some ways you guys can remember this, like which one's which, you can remember sine comes second, right? So like sine's the second part. Or we can do an ABC order, the ABC order, that X comes before Y in the alphabet, so C comes before S in the alphabet. Right. This is going to be stuff that you guys really want to like internalize so that the cosine is the x, the sine is the y. You've got to make sure we remember this. Okay. Um, another thing that we're going to use is the idea of tangent. Now, tangent, you guys have kind of known as in your Sokotoa being the opposite over the adjacent. But if we now know that the cosine is our x and the sine is the y, if we make this a little bit bigger. So you guys can kind of see this. Alright. So if I was going over this angle, right, and I wanted to find the tangent, right? The x is like the cosine, the y is like the sine. If you wanted to do opposite over adjacent, what would the opposite be here? Do you have an idea? Good, the sine or the y. Good. This would have been like the O. This one's like the A. So if we want to do the tangent here, instead of doing opposite over adjacent, it's really just going to be the sine over the cosine. Now, do you guys need to like know that this, um, like, because the y is like the um, the y um, axis, the cosine is like the x axis? No. You guys do have to know though that tangent is made up of sine over the cosine. That's going to be another thing that kind of comes up a lot. Some ways you guys can memorize this is that think about what letter is close to the T. It's S or the C. Oh. S. So we're going to make sure S is on top. And this was just a little trick. If you guys can think of anything fun to kind of help yourself, chapter 9 is a lot of memorizing because it's used in the rest of the entire class. So if there's stuff in here that you're like, hmm, I got to make sure I remember this, flashcards would be a good idea. 
right? Um, that the cosine x sine y, that'd be a good thing to put on a flashcard. Tangent sine over cosine, another good thing, right? I'll keep putting these on our little like star problems, so that way we like remember them. But um, the more you guys can do, the better. Okay. So what we're going to work on first is that each of our quadrants, right, um, tells us where certain trig functions are positive or negative. So to do that, what we're going to come up with is this little kind of thing for a quadrant. You guys saw this yesterday, how we kind of broke it up. Um, we had our 0, 360, the 90, the 180, the 270 degrees. Right, so we have quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. So quadrant 1, this is something you guys are going to want to write in. Quadrant 1, the A is going to stand for all. And what all means is that the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, these are all going to be positive in quadrant 1. So if we look in quadrant 1, here's our quadrant 1, look at your ordered pairs. If I know the cosine is the x, what do you guys want to put all the cosines? Are they positive or negative? They're positive. Good. So the cosine is positive here. If the sine is the second thing, what are all the signs? Positive too. And the way we get tangent is sine over the cosine. Well, if you guys know all the sines are positive and the cosines are positive, what's a positive divided by positive? Positive. Positive. Good. So the tangent is also going to be positive. So everything in quadrant one is all going to be positive. Now in quadrant two, the S is going to stand for sine. So in quadrant two, only the sine is going to be positive. So if we look at quadrant two over here, quadrant two, okay. sine is your second coordinate. Let's look at all the signs. What do you guys notice about those? Well, they're two. Yeah, are they positive or negative, though? They're all positive. Good. All the signs are positive. Everything else is negative. So this chart tells you guys only where things are going to be positive. So just the signs positive here. That means the cosine. So all your cosines are negative. And if I wanted to do tangent, if I took sine over the cosine here, what would a positive divided by a negative end up being? Negative, so your tan, that's why your tangent is negative here. Um, in quadrant three, what do you think the D stands for? Tan. Yeah, good. So in quadrant three, tan is going to be positive. It's the only thing that should be positive. So if we look over at quadrant three now. One, two, three. All right, so we look at quadrant three. What do you guys notice about all the cosines? They're negative. Sines are also negative. But the reason why tangent is positive is because if I look at tangent, I know it's sine over the cosine. Well, a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. So that's why tangent is positive there. Um, and the last one, the C stands for cosine being positive. So in our fourth quadrant, and here's our quadrant four, we look at all the cosines. See how those are the only positive ones? Right, the signs are negative, and the same deal if you did a positive divided by a negative, it's going to be negative. So that's why your tan's negative there. So this unit circle, that's kind of how you guys can tell where things are positive and negative. We have the same type of numbers over and over again, it's just that some of them are different signs, and that's because of this little chart. Now, you can come up with your own little thing to memorize this. The one I see in math books is like all students take calculus. Um, we also have all scientists take chemistry. Um, someone came up earlier, all students take cookie. Um, my first year, we had all students torture cats. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, this is a jump back in the day. Right? Yeah. Not really. You're not going to have to do a chart, but you're going to have to know where things are positive. Um, 
it's more that you have to know if I give you a value and it ends in a certain quadrant, like is your sign going to be positive or negative there? Stuff like that? Yeah, so we have to do it for every single one. Yeah, no, you're not going to do it for every single one. It's going to be like when you actually look at a value, is it positive or negative there? You're just going to do it one time. But I guess to do that, you need to understand whether it's positive or negative. Yeah, but we never want to do that. Oh, that would make sense. We're doing a lot to figure it out. Oh, I would not want to do that. <laughs> So this is kind of your reading and your reading exam for like an intro problem. This is what your first part of the homework is. That's great one. Is it what? No, I didn't. Ashley thought it's a great one. It's like it's offensive to see like school though. It's like oh, oh, school piece of crap. <laughs> well, hopefully that's it's cool. Well, yeah. Well, you guys can come up with your own, whatever you guys think. That's great. I know, it's fine. All right, so um, here's how your stuff looks like on your region. <laughs> Sometimes it's really important you guys know what your inequality is. If you have the sine of some angle is less than zero, think if something's less than zero, is it positive or negative? Negative, good. So this is like saying the sine is negative. Okay. And if tangent is greater than zero, what does that mean? Positive. Okay. So what we want to think about is with our little ASTC, um, if we know that the sine is negative and the tangent is positive, what quadrant would we have to be in? Three. Actually, think three. Ash, by three. Because the last three can be negative and then quadrant three, they can't positive. Perfect. Yep, can't positive in quadrant three. Right? We can't be in quadrant one, even though, yes, can't positive in quadrant one, but everything's positive in quadrant one. So if the sign's negative, it can't be up here. Yep, so it's quadrant three. Okay, so you're just answering the quadrant here. Now, for the second one, let me get rid of this. If Tangent is a, oh, what kind of, what kind of number is this? Negative. negative. So this is another way to say tan's negative. And our cosine, though, is what? It's bigger than zero. Positive. Positive. Great. Okay. So yell it out. Think to yourself real quick. Where is cosine going to be positive, but the tangent would be negative? She said don't yell it out. Smart. But, okay. This is the Okay. Right. Alex, that was great. Good job. Four is right, but I just wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to think. Good. So, quadrant four, fantastic. Right, because the cosine is positive there. Right, everything else would have been negative. Why don't you guys take the next two? Right, try those out, see what you get. Oh, 
Oh, that's very sure. That's all right. Because positive, they really get to make positive. They're dead dead. They just enjoy it, right? Okay. Um, all right. Um, so we get three and four. Yeah. yeah. Great. Good. That's all there is to it. There's not really anything you're looking to see. Where is it positive? Find the squad group. So your first part of the homework is that stuff. Now, um, I did not. The other classes were like, this is way too hard. We're not going to do it. So we're just not going to. Um, just the top part. We're going to do the bottom part. Now, the way you guys can figure out what degree measures are, like 30, 45, 60, we're all special. One way is to use special right triangles. And so far, everyone has been like, this is way too long and complicated. Because you have to know what things are across from each other, use Pythagorean theorem to find out missing parts, and then use Sokotoa, which is very long. So, Thomas, you'll love this, right? To make our life way easier, okay, what we're going to do is just memorize ordered pairs because if we, it's way, trust me, it's way better. It's a lot less work. Well, with these ordered pairs, so these are what we want to know. The 0 and the 90, you guys remember getting there? If I do my radius with 1, I'm going to get a circle. So to get to that ordered pair, we'd be going over 1 and then up 0. So that's where our 0 degree is. Now if we want to get to the 90 degree, I know this is a 1, we'd have to go over 0, but up 1 unit. That's why it's the ordered pair 0, 1. Now the other ones in the middle, those are a little bit more complicated, but you guys kind of noticed that there was definitely a pattern with what was on our unit circle. They had a lot of the same numbers, so it's kind of switched or um, positive or negative. So when we have a 30 degree, what we want to make sure we kind of know is since this is a 3, the radical 3 part is going to come first. So it's going to go first, radical 3 over 2, then the 1 half. Now with the 45, actually, hang on, let me go back. So if you know the 30, what could you guys do to get 60? Well, it's not double. Look at look what happens with your order pairs. Yeah, good, Aunt. You just flip. So if you know 30 is radical 3 over 2, 1 half, to get to 60, all we're going to do is we're just going to switch them. And so if you know one of these, you can get the other one pretty quick just by switching. What do you notice about the 45 degree? Good, they're all radical 2 over 2. They're both the same. So if you guys know that it's radical 2, the other one's going to be radical 2 over 2 over 2. So up 2. The reason why we want to know this is because once you guys have your order paired, it's very quick to find the cosine, sine, and tangent um, rather than actually using Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem over and over again. Okay. The cosine is going to be the first coordinate in all these. The sine is going to be the second part. So if I ask you guys, find the exact value of the cosine of 30. Well, it's not going to be good enough anymore in our calculators. If you guys do have a calculator right now, go ahead and type in cosine 30. You have one. Oh, here we go. So if I try to type in cosine 30, good, okay, so we got this. Now, this number is not exact. Your calculator ends up rounding. It's like 10 decimal spots out. So this is not an exact value. Your Regents exam wants everything in exact value. So by using an exact value, what they want is actually after 30 degrees, they want you to look to see what part's the cosine, and this is your answer. Radical 3 over 2. Oh, we'll see that in a second. Okay. One thing you can do is check. If I actually typed in radical 3 divided by 2, you do get the same thing. Right? So it's a way to check. But we can't write 0. 0.8666 or 8602, whatever it is. So that's not an exact value. They want you to use radical. Okay? So really important. We know our order pairs, which one's first, which one's second. Now, if I asked you guys for the sine of 45, well, we're going to just go to your 45 degree. Sine comes second, so it's just going to be radical 2 over 2. That's your answer. 
So if you know your ordered pair, it's really quick to find the sign and the cosine. You're looking at which one comes first, which one comes second. Tom, you had a great question. If we have tangent, though, we got a little bit more work. What was tangent made up of? Sine over the cosine. Good. So what we're going to do, we have to take the sine of 30 over the cosine of 30. Because we're dealing with tan 30, we want to keep the degree the same. And then we're going to fill in what we know about these values. Well, what is the sine 30 degrees? Don't you tell them. Oh, okay. Think up here. Close. That's the cosine. What comes second? One half. One half. Good. Because the sine comes second. So the sine of 30 is going to be one half. Right? What's the cosine of 30? So the radical 3 over 2. Perfect. Okay. Now, we can't leave it like this. This is a disaster. So what do you guys have to do? Yeah, go to copy, change, flip thing, all right, or multiply by the reciprocal, whatever you choose. So we're going to flip that bottom. It's going to look like this. What can we do with the two to make our life a little easier? Okay. Cross out radical three. Right here? Yeah. Yep, because I just multiplied by the reciprocal, so it's like the bottom is not there. If you took this and you flipped it. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, cross the twos out. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. It makes it a little bit easier with our math. So what we're left with is 1 over radical 3. Can we leave a radical on the bottom? No. No, it's really bad. What do we do? Good job, Norma. Nice. Multiply the top and the bottom by radical 3. Super. Okay. Now on the top, 1 times radical 3 is? Good. On the bottom, it's just what? 3. 3. Good. Nice work. Radical times itself. The radical goes away and left is just what's underneath. All right, I'll have a song. Don't think. I know. <laughs> Such a great time here. Um, so what about if I gave you guys a tangent of 45? What would we have to make this into? We have to do radical 2 over 3. Well, you're right. Well, I'm going to go slow through this. So it's like the sine of 45 over the cosine of 45. That's how we get tangent. Um, Ashlyn, what was the sine of 45 though? You need to ask. Radical 2 over 2. Good. And the cosine of 45 is another. Same thing. Same thing. It's radical 2 over 2. Again. Now, think about you have something divided by itself. Good, Ali. It's just 1. Awesome. We didn't have to do a lot of work with that one. Because anytime you guys have something divided by itself, it's just 1. Alright, um, let's do these next ones quick. Cosine 45, let's look at your 45. Find your cosine. What do you think it is? Oh, you got it, Sally. Alright, so our last one, the sine is six, or, yeah, sine 60. So find your 60 degrees, which one's your sine? Good, radical 3 over 2, perfect. That's it. Nothing crazy, right? So it looks like you guys have a lot of homework tonight. It's not as bad, right? Just um, write out your order pairs on your homework sheet so it's fast for you guys to go to look when you're trying to find all your values. And I would write out like your, um, you know, your ultimate state calculus thing or your ASTC or whatever you want to memorize it. <laughs> all right, so here's your page 372. 21 to 26. This is like your ASTC stuff, right? We're looking at your quadrants. Um, and then page 380, 346, and then 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. Okay. It looks like a lot, but you're just taking, like, if one of the questions might be, What's the sine of 30? That's it. You just look at your order pair, get your sign, get your 30 degrees, that's all. Yeah, sure. Okay.